The dollar store has so many great items that you can bring home to have a plastic free or less plastic in your kitchen. These wooden utensils are great. These glass jars are awesome and great for storage. These reusable soap holders are good, so let's bring one home. And of course, these all natural sponges are definitely the best, so grab some. Now that you have some of your items home, let's go through some things. These plastic utensils can really wear out quickly. This plastic utensil or this plastic spatula, as you can see at the end, actually ended up getting melted. And now you have all these little tiny pieces that are actually going to go and come off when you go and use this in your pots or your pans when you're cooking. So let's go and get rid of this. And instead, switching to bamboo or switching to something that is going to be a little bit more sustainable for yourself and your kitchen, that is a wood utensil instead, is a better idea because this will not leave little tiny pieces of plastic in your food. On to the next. I've had this plastic soap container for a very long time, but it's time to finally get rid of it. So this ceramic container instead, of course you still have a little bit of plastic that is on here. It's something that you can't fully and totally avoid, at least for a soap pump. So we're just going to go and take this little tiny clip off of this piece here, and believe me, in the long run, this is going to go and save you a lot of hassle, and also it's just going to be cleaner as well. These plastic containers can sometimes get really gross on the outer edges and can just kind of have a lot of bacteria on them. So pouring this into the ceramic container, screwing on the top, and now you can go and have this in your kitchen and continue to refill it. Sponges. Now sponges like this, you can go and purchase at the dollar store as well, but these actually are usually made of plastic. And when you use these over time, they start to break down and you have all these little fuzzy pieces that when you're scrubbing your pots and pans will actually get into your food. You can see here, because this is a little bit of an older sponge, this is about a month old for the sponge, which it has been cleaned before, it breaks down. So this all natural sponge instead, which you want to replace every 30 to about 40 days, you can cut into four sections. These are pretty big and you can go and get these at the dollar store. These also two cut up will be four separate sponges that have actually a little tiny point to them, which are so incredibly useful for getting into some of the nooks and crannies on certain things that you wouldn't be able to get really with another sponge. And it washes pretty much exactly the same as a plastic based sponge would. So you see here, it's not going to peel as much, but of course this is natural and it will break down over time. Now rinsing out the sink. They do actually have these over at the dollar store. And if you have a plastic food catch that's in your sink, get rid of it. Those things can smell so bad and collect a bunch of bacteria. And these metal mesh ones collect a lot more food. Now, you want to go and of course rinse out your rice before you go and cook it. Plastic strainers, from what I've noticed, usually the holes are a lot bigger on them in comparison to mesh ones. And you can go and get these mesh ones over at the dollar store as well. There is a very small amount of plastic on it, which of course, you can't always avoid with things that are in your kitchen, but it's always great to start to reduce the amount of plastic that is in your kitchen. And these honestly just last so much longer than the plastic ones. Now onto going and storing the rest of the rice. So these glass containers you can get at the dollar store. So let's get this sponge, put a little bit of soap onto there and let's go and wash this out. These are so easy to go and use. The only thing is there is a small rubber little piece that is on the top, which does create an airtight seal, which is very good for any food that you want to put in here. But again, it's a little bit of plastic on certain things. Then you can go and store whatever it is you want to go and store. Now we're going to make a cup of coffee. Yes, you can go and purchase reusable K-cups or reusable cups. These are so much better than your one singular use K-cup. You just refill them and then what you can do is put it into your coffee maker and these can be used hundreds of times in comparison to only one time. And yes, these are plastic, but these are so much better for the environment because you can use these a bunch of times. And that is some really good coffee. Having a plastic-free kitchen can be so incredibly hard. So it is important for any sort of materials that are left over like this, that what you can do is just put it into a bag, let this fill up, and actually go and drop this off at most grocery stores. They will have a receptacle that you can put this into, and you can recycle them. Thank you all so much for watching. There are more tips and tricks for having a plastic-free kitchen over on Home Talk. To use up some scrap materials that I had lying around, I wanted to make a fun treat station for my lovable pup, Zoe. So I began with this old shelf that I had and I painted it using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint in the shade in the navy. So I went over the whole piece making sure that I got the fronts, the sides, 
and the edges and then I just let that dry. Next I came in with these scrap 2x4 pieces and again I covered them in my Dixie Belle paint as well. Again making sure that I did the sides, the tops and also the ends because those pieces will be showing as well. So I did a nice solid coat and then I let this dry. Once all my pieces were dry, I brought them back in and I placed my 2x4s on top of the shelf piece, lining them up at the ends. They did overhang a little bit, but that's okay. Then holding it, I flipped it over and then from the back side, using a drill, I drilled in 2 inch screws from the underneath into the 2x4s. So two on each side to make sure that my 2x4s were secured to my shelf. Once drilled in and screwed in, I flipped back over the shelf. When I was drilling, the wood did move a bit and it scuffed up the paint, so I just went over it again with some more of the Dixie Belle paint just to cover those scratch marks. And then I came in with these uh, brackets here. These are wrought iron brackets for closets, and I just mounted those onto the top of my 2x4s, making sure that they were even, and I wanted to make sure that the long sides of the brackets were pointing up. Then I'm going to take these two empty plastic water bottles and I'm going to remove the caps. I don't need those. And I'm also going to remove the paper packaging as I don't need those either. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a sharp instrument. This is just a crafting tool that I have. You could use scissors or a knife and I'm just going to poke a hole into the plastic water bottle and flip it over and do one on the other side. And then I'm going to repeat the process on the other bottle. Then I'm going to take a yarn needle and using some embroidery thread, I'm going to thread that through the needle. And then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to push it through one of the holes. And I do have to kind of squeeze the water bottle a little bit and pull it back out the other hole. And then on the same string, I'm going to do it again through the other bottle, threading it through each hole and back out again. And now I have both these water bottles on the same line of string. And you can see here they dangle and they move. So next I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take these water bottles and I'm going to attach the string to the top of my brackets. You want to make sure that the string is pulled very tight. You want this string to be nice and tight so that the bottles don't droop or sag. So I'm just going to tie a nice knot here on one side of the bracket and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see exactly how much string I need to make this nice and tight, cut it and then I'm going to apply it onto the next hole on the other bracket. Again pulling very very tight. If it's not pulled tight this uh, DIY project will not work. Once I have these bottles attached I just did just go ahead and want to add a nice little creative touch to this. So I did cut out a decal with my Cricut cutting machine. If you don't have a Cricut cutting machine, you could always find a nice stencil or hand paint something on as well. Now I'm going to take this outside and we are going to show Zoe how this works. So Zoe, my dog here, she actually loves treats as any dog does. And she also loves water bottles. So I was hoping that this um, would entice her. And so all she has to do is kind of come over and bite the water balls or flip them and try and get the treats out. So you'll see here I set it up for her and she actually loves it. It's so cute. Um, I have to be careful not to keep refilling it over and over again because too many treats is not always a good thing. But she also loves to play with the water bottles on the line um, on the string. So this was a DIY project that was a win in my books. I hope this inspires you to get creative um, with your own pets and maybe come up with your own DIY um, treat station or pet toy. Thanks so much for tuning into Home Talk and we'll see you on another video.